All right, I hope you're ready for a big one, folks. We've got the Heiferman Aria Organic Edition and also the Ananda Nano Edition today. And that means lots and lots of comparisons. I was going to separate these into two different reviews, but I realized that many of you are going to want to know all about both of them and how they compare individually. In other words, how the organic compares to the nano. So I'm going to cover off all of that. We've got bunches and bunches of comparisons to go through as well. So grab your favorite coffee, drink, food, whatever you want, kick back, and let's go through a whole lot of comparisons with the Aria Organic and the Ananda Nano. Before I go any further, I do want to mention the fact that I know I'm saying Aria technically the wrong way. It's not how it's meant to be pronounced, and I apologize. It's way too well hardwired for me to try to adjust it as I think about all there is that I need to tell you in this review. So you're going to have to bear with me and know that I know it's wrong. For those that aren't aware, apparently it's meant to be pronounced Aria, and I think even Ananda isn't actually meant to be pronounced quite that way. But either way, I'm going to call them Ananda and Aria or in this case, the organic and the nano. And with that said, let's jump in and start talking about what we've got here. If you're new to the headphone game, what you might not be aware is that the Aria and the Ananda have been around for quite a long time. We're now up to the third or fourth variant of each of these headphones. And in the case of these particular editions, they've come pretty hot on the heels of the previous stealth versions. By way of introduction, the Ananda Nano here comes in at 599 US dollars. And it's now a 14 ohm, 94 decibel per milliwatt planar magnetic driver. That means that you can get these to dangerous listening levels with just 40 milliwatts of power, making them very easy to drive. They're actually easier than the previous version, Ananda Stealth. And that's the Ananda Stealth here, for those not familiar. So you can also see they've changed the colorway. It's now all silver instead of black and silver. Whether you like that or not, I'll leave that up to you. But this is what the new Ananda Nano looks like. And then if we go over to the Aria, this is the Aria Organic. And I must say, I really like the new design. So the look of this now has the timber with the black, whereas the old stealth version was all black on black. So I think these now look a lot more premium, and that kind of suits their price tag. Because these are a 1299 US dollar headphone, they absolutely should be a little bit premium. These come in with a 16 ohm impedance and also 94 decibel per milliwatt sensitivity. And that means that again, because the sensitivity is the same, we're going to require just 40 milliwatts to get these to dangerous listening levels. And so that means that for both of these headphones, all you need is an amplifier capable of a couple of hundred milliwatts, and you're absolutely golden. Of course, the quality of the amplifier does still play a part, but neither of these need heaps and heaps of power to sound good. They need quality power, not lots of power. From there, much of the design is the same on these, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the design and the comfort. What I will say is that generally, these are very comfortable headphones. When you do go up to the Aria, one thing you get is this rotation of the cups, and that does make a big difference in fit and comfort. So whilst the Ananda is good, it's a solid, comfortable headphone, it doesn't have the same swivel. So if I go over to this one, what you'll see is that these are just a very simple printed metal headband or a bent metal headband, and so there's very little rotation. It's just what give there is in the headband itself. It does mean that they don't fit quite as well, not quite as securely. They're plenty secure enough, but just not as good as the Aria Organic. But beyond that, they're very, very similar. You've got basically the same headband material. It's very comfortable because it's a very wide suspension style headband. And then the pads are very large. They're this teardrop shape that we've all become familiar with from Heiferman headphones. And so long-term comfort, general sort of stability on the head, all that's really good. As with all Heiferman headphones these days, we've also got dual 3.5mm cable entries on the bottom. And the good news is that these headphones are now coming with a decent quality cable. I do still personally prefer to use aftermarket cables, things like the Apple's Flow cable or a nice aftermarket cable from any of those other manufacturers around the market. I do think it's an upgrade over the stock cables, but at least the stock cables now are quite usable and quite ergonomically friendly. 
But beyond all that, there's not a lot to say about these. They're still plain and magnetic, they're easy to drive, they're comfortable, and then it all comes down, of course, to how it sounds. And so I wanted to get really quickly into the sound comparisons, because that's really where we're going to put these into context. Are they an upgrade over their predecessors? Are they comparable to each other? What are you getting if you spend more money on the organic over the nano? And how do they compare to some of the competition on the market? Now, for anyone getting excited that there might be a Meza 109 Pro comparison here, unfortunately there won't be. I don't own the 109 Pros. I am contemplating a purchase because they're a headphone I think I probably should own. But for now, there's no comparison. All I will say is that I think I probably would still enjoy the 109 Pro more than the Nano. I think it's probably tonally a headphone that I like better than either of these. But I'm not going to be in a position to say which one's better. I think they're different. I think the 109 Pro is probably a little bit better than this, maybe technically not quite as good as the Aria, but it's different enough that it's a headphone I could see having alongside them. So I'm not going to be able to go into depth on the 109 Pro, maybe in the future I'll be in a position to, but right now there's lots of other comparisons, just not that one. And the first comparison I wanted to start off with was to put the Ananda Nano up against the Ananda Stealth. What's changed? What's different? Is the Nano better? For a lot of my comparisons in this review, I've used a couple of different tracks. For this comparison, I used Free Radicals by The Flaming Lips, and also Custard Pie by The Black Crows and Jimmy Page. And the first thing I noticed from the Nano was it does a wonderful job of imaging and separation of sounds. The placement and the space between sounds is nothing short of fantastic. I feel like the soundstage from the Nano is wider than it was from the Ananda Stealth. And I think also the image separation is a bit better too. The Stealth overall has a very slightly warmer or thicker sound to it, and that could actually be preferable for some people. Overall, I think probably the Nano is the slightly more tonally balanced sound, but it does also have a bit more brightness to its sound. So neither of them I would say is completely tonally accurate. Both of them have their own points of emphasis, but I think many people would say that the Nano is slightly more neutral, whereas I think the Ananda Stealth is just a tiny bit warmer compared to the Nano. And this is where it does get a little bit difficult separating these two, because I think the Stealth on some tracks is actually more enjoyable, and a case in point is Custard Pie. Listening to Custard Pie, I did find that the Ananda Nano was getting just a little bit bitey in the upper end. I occasionally felt like there was too much energy in the treble, and it was just a little bit harsh for me. In the case of the Ananda Stealth, I very rarely felt that. But what's interesting about the Ananda Nano is that even though it's a little bit brighter, it's got a bit more upper mid-range energy compared to the Ananda Stealth, but despite that, it's also more refined. And so whilst you've got a slightly thicker or warmer sound from the Ananda Stealth, and it is only slight, but that slightly thicker sound actually doesn't mean a smoother sound. The Ananda Nano is much more refined, and I say much more, we're not talking a huge, huge shift here, but it's significant. It's a clear and obvious difference when you listen to them side by side, is that the Ananda Nano is more refined, separation is better, all the technicalities basically are better from the Ananda Nano. I found there was a tiny bit of splashiness from the Ananda Stealth when listening to Custard Pie, and that was gone when I went to the Nano. It was much cleaner, much smoother, much more controlled. And so your treble energy stays about the same between the two, You've just got a little bit less thickness coming through from the Ananda Nano, that little bit more sort of upper mid-range emphasis. But the refinement and the technicalities totally make up for it. If you're someone that prefers a smoother, warmer sound, and what I mean by that is that if you're someone that prefers a smoother, warmer sound, you might be thinking the Ananda Stealth is the better choice. But really what I would say is that the refinement coming from the Nano actually makes it more enjoyable. I'm someone who generally does prefer a warmer sound, but the Nano for me is the clear and easy winner over and above the Stealths, which is still a great headphone by the way. The Ananda Stealth was absolutely the one to beat, it just so happens it's been beaten by the Nano. And so I think the only complaint that I could level at the Nano is it's come so fast on the heels of the Stealth. I can see people who've bought the Stealth being really annoyed that all of a sudden there is a clearly better headphone that's come out that directly replaces the headphone they just bought. Now I know that Heifermann are really good at doing some changeovers with these sorts of things, so people can contact Heifermann and look at a swap over price, but it is a shame you're going to have to if you want the better headphone, and the Nano is that. And so I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but for me the Ananda Nano is definitely the better of these two, and if you're new into the market, then don't bother spending a bit less money to get a Stealth, unless you're saving a lot of money of course buying it second hand. But if you're in a position where you can buy both of them for roughly the same price, then definitely buy yourself the Nano, you won't be disappointed. But that's of course assuming that the Nano is actually the best headphone for the price. So far we've only talked about Heifermann options, but what if we talk about others? What if we look outside the Heifermann stable? 
moving on to another headphone that I really like at around the same price. And now we're putting the Ananda Nano up against the Harmonic Dyn G200. The G200 is another plain and magnetic headphone. It's one that I adore in terms of its tonality. I don't love it so much in terms of its fit and comfort, but it's stuck around in my collection because it's just an enjoyable headphone to listen to. For this comparison, I again use two different tracks, and they were Old Friends by Coldplay, and To Say The Least You're The Most by Tower of Power. Starting off with the G200, and as always, it sounds lovely. There's a good sense of detail through the guitar. The mid-range is all very clear, very rich, beautifully delivered overall. Going over to the Ananda Nano then, and there's all this extra detail that's retrieved. Suddenly I could hear more information, more texture, more nuance in the guitar. And even sounds like the sibilance and the plosives, so the tur, the pur, the burr, all those sounds from the vocalist had more detail and texture in them too. There was more nuance from the Nano. Thinking about the overall vocals, and again there was more texture from the Nano, but it still had the same level of body and presence that it needed to, to kind of match the G200. I did find that listening to To Say The Least You're The Most through the Nanos, they did start to get just a little bit aggressive in the treble. This recording is a bit hot in the treble, and that's where the G200's sort of smoother sound was actually a welcome relief. And so between the two of them, I think the way I'd define them is that the G200 is the smoother, more relaxing listen, but there's no doubt in my mind that the Nano is definitely the more technically capable headphone. It's probably to a point where I can say safely it is the better headphone, but I can also see some people finding it a little bit too bright. If you listen to a lot of recordings that are a little bit harsh in the top end, or if your source chain is a little bit clinical, a little bit edgy, the Ananda Nano could be too much of a good thing. And that's where something like the G200 could actually be a better choice. I think for me, if I had to choose only one of these two, it would definitely be the Ananda Nano. But the good news is they could also live very happily side by side. The G200 for those times you just want to relax and listen to music, and the Ananda Nano for those times you really want to engage with the detail, the texture, the resolution, all the technicalities. And so the Ananda Nano is continuing to make a really strong case for being the best headphone in its class. But before I give it that crown, I did also want to put it up next to the Sennheiser HD 660S2. Going into this, I knew it was going to be a very different experience listening to the 660S2 up against the Nano. We've got a high impedance dynamic driver that's known for its vocal quality, up against a really technically resolving planar magnetic. For this test, I used two more tracks, and they were Enjoy the Silence by Depeche Mode and Hog Call and Blues by the Mingus Big Band starting off with the HD 660S2, and it sounded great as you'd expect. The sound was clean, it was spacious, the vocals were wonderful. And then when I moved over to the Nanos, things were brighter again, more textural again, and not as easy to listen to. But once again, as was the case with the G200, this comes down somewhat to the choice of music. On the Depeche Mode track, with some of the samples being used, that's where the Nano was a bit harsh. But then moving over to the big band and the more acoustic instruments rather than the electronic samples, and now the Nano was absolutely at its best. And so what it's kind of showing you is that the Nano is going to reveal any issues with the recordings, particularly at the top end. Any harshness in samples, harshness in recording, overly hot treble on things like the percussion, that's going to come back to bite you a bit with the Nanos. And that's where headphones like the G200 and the HD 660S2 can still have their benefits. Having said that, in going back to the 660S2, I was losing space and separation in the music. Everything kind of closed in a little bit. It wasn't congested or muddy, but that's really where the Nano is at its best, is in separating everything beautifully, focusing the imaging beautifully, and giving you a wonderful sense of space. And so I think both of these headphones, being the 660S2 and the Ananda Nano, are wonderful, wonderful choices. They're both very different. I think they're both tonally very good. They're quite coherent through their range, but they do have different tonalities. The HD 660S2 is a bit warmer. The Nano is a little bit leaner. It does lean a bit more into the treble. And so both are different, and it's going to, again, depend on what you're after. If you're looking for a relaxed and engaging musical listening experience, the 660S2 is the one to go for. But if you're looking for superb technicalities and a really, really impressive listen that's occasionally going to come back to bite you if the source material is not so good, then the Ananda Nano is really, really impressive. I think for the money, this could be the most impressive headphone on the market right now, from a technical point of view. Tonally, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but if I had to reach for just one headphone that I knew was going to give me maximum performance at the price point, it would definitely be the Ananda Nano. I think if I was going to reach for just one headphone for absolute musical enjoyment, that's going to be a tougher call. And I think it would come down to the 660S2 or the Nano at this price point. 
But there is no doubt in my mind that from a technical point of view, the Nano is hands down, clear, and easily the winner within this category. And so that brought me to a new question, which is knowing just how good it is now, is there any point in upgrading to an Aria Organic? Do we just stick with the Nano? Is that as much as you need to spend? Because we're talking about twice the price to go from the Nano over to the Organic, is it worth the step up? Listening to Gashead Goes West by Life... And the first thing I noticed was again that top end on the Nano. It's got just a little bit more energy up there than is natural, and it makes it a little bit crisper than it should be. The kick bass in this track, though, has great impact from the Nano. And that's one thing that the new Hyferman range are doing really well, is they're balancing that bit of extra treble energy with excellent bass extension and excellent bass weight. The vocals from the Nano are nicely present. They're very well separated and focused in the mix. But I did find them again getting just a little bit edgy in the upper mids and the lower treble moving over then to the Aria Organic, and you can definitely hear that they've come from the same house, the same general tuning approach. The Aria Organic is very similar, but it does have a bit more emphasis in the upper end of the treble. So the very, very top end register is a little bit sparklier still from the Aria Organic. However, what it's giving you to offset that extra treble is a more refined sound again. So anyone that's thinking that these are exactly the same drivers in two different chassis, it's absolutely not the case. For one thing, we've got different impedance numbers, but also you can immediately hear the difference in them. There's a lot more refinement from the Aria Organic, and that's even though the Ananda Nano is so good already, the Aria Organic is absolutely better. You can hear the difference straight away. As I switched back and forth between the two, the extra refinement from the Organic had me hearing the treble from the Nano as being just a little bit metallic in comparison, a little bit artificial sounding. And the other thing that I noticed was that the Aria Organic just sounds like it's doing everything easily. So there's not a vast difference in terms of the tonality of these two. There's a little bit of that extra treble emphasis up at the very end of the range for the organic, but generally speaking, they are tonally very, very similar. But when you go to the Aria Organic, you're getting a headphone that sounds more premium. There's more refinement, it's more in control, and it's just at ease with everything that goes through it. And so for me, the simple answer here is that if you're in a position where you can choose between the two and you can afford both comfortably you should absolutely buy the Aria Organic. It's the better headphone. It's more refined. It's more technically capable. It's more easy to listen to because of that sense of ease. It's just better. But it also goes to show just how good the Ananda Nano's gotten. It's a wonderful, wonderful sounding headphone. It just happens to be bested by a much more expensive headphone from the same brand. And so with that in mind, let's now turn to the old Aria versus the new Aria, or should I say the old new Aria versus the new new Aria, because again, the Stealth hasn't been around for that long. It's another case where people that have gone out and bought the Stealth have a right, I think, to be a little bit annoyed. You've gone and spent the money on this one as potentially your end game headphone, and now there's a better one for, I think from memory, a little bit less money coming from the same company. So that is a shame, but maybe there's no need to change over. Let's find out. Listening to Eagle Birds by the Black Keys and flipping between these two, the first thing I noticed was just how good the Stealth is. There's a reason this is a headphone that I absolutely adored and loved. The bass is excellent, the sound is clean, the treble's refined, there's just nothing missing from the Aria Stealth. I would say that on this recording, the vocal comes across a little bit thin. It's got a decent sense of kind of weight to it, but a little bit thin in terms of its tonality, but that could be the recording. And indeed, moving over to the organic, I think it is the recording. But that said, the organic does also bring a bit of extra bite in the treble. It's a really interesting tuning though, because there's that bit more bite in the treble, a bit more emphasis in the treble, but at the same time, there's somehow also a little bit more weight in the mid-range from the Aria Organic. The mid-range is also therefore a bit more detailed across the board, and the separation and the imaging is a little bit better too. So this is really interesting. It's unclear to me what Heifman have done to improve the sound of the Aria Organic. The extra treble should tilt the tonality more into brightness. And yet somehow, they've also managed to boost the mid-range. And I think it's more than just frequency response. I think it's coming down to the behavior of the driver, the speed of the decay, potentially resonances, I'm not sure. But there's more going on than simple frequency response shifts here. And the good news is that that extra bit of mid-range weight means that despite the extra treble from the Aria Organic, there's still a better overall tonality. They're more balanced across the board. Everything sounds more natural and more lifelike to me. And so yes, this is a case where if you're looking at the two, you absolutely should buy the organic. And it does mean that for those of you that are itching for that last little bit of performance, if you've got the stealth, you might want to upgrade. I don't think it's a massive shift here. 
I think the shift between the Ananda Stealth and the Ananda Nano was bigger than what I hear between the Aria Stealth and the Aria Organic. So I wouldn't rush out and say dump your Aria Stealth and get the Aria Organic. It's one of those where I think it's not a huge, huge shift. I do think the Aria Organic is a little bit better, but I don't think it's worth spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars to make that jump. Ultimately, what you're getting between the two is similar tonality, but a little bit more weight from the mid-range, a little bit more overall sort of refinement and technicality from the organic, but it does also have that little bit of extra upper treble that can at times make it sound a touch less natural. To summarise it all though, so we can get onto some other comparisons, I do clearly think the Aria Organic is the better headphone. As I said, I don't know that it's worth ditching your stealth to get the organic, but if you've got two of them in front of you and you can choose between the two, the organic's the one to go for. And so with that in mind, like we did with the Ananda, let's now find out if the Aria Organic is actually the best headphone at its price point. Now this is where I would have loved to have a Mesa 109 Pro to throw in the mix. As I've already said, I don't have one, so apologies I can't give you the comparison, but I do think it would have been a really tight battle. As it is though, I've got a couple of other headphones I wanted to try out, and the first one is the Sandy Peacock. This is quite a different style of headphone to the Aria Organic, but it's one that I really enjoy. So I wanted to compare them and see just how well they stacked up. Moving again between a couple of different tracks, I tried each and every one by Everything But The Girl and Exogenesis by Muse. And the first thing that stood out to me, as always from the Peacocks, was just how enjoyable vocals are from them. The Peacocks are quite a mid-range focused headphone, it's part of what I like about them, but I was conscious as I listened to them that their soundstage is quite flat. It's a fairly left-right presentation listening to the strings in Exogenesis from the Peacocks, and I did feel like there was a little bit more texture to be had. The sound was very smooth and very enjoyable, but I did feel like it was just a bit held back. And I also felt like the bass was not as punchy or impactful as I'd like, and that's where the Aria Organic was kind of able to step forward. Going over to the Aria Organic, there was more breath, there was more texture, the vocals weren't quite as smooth from the organic, so do take that into account. If you're a lover of smooth, rich vocals, that's where the organic's not so strong. But what I enjoyed was I could hear more of the room from the organics. Their technicalities once again came to the fore, much like with the Ananda Nano and its competitors, the same was true for the Aria Organic. The overall soundstage didn't really get any bigger than it was from the Peacocks, but I could hear more space around all of the sounds, if that makes sense. It's kind of like the instruments didn't get any further apart, but I could hear that the room that they were in was bigger than it sounded on the Peacocks. I also felt like the overall tonality from the Aria Organic was a bit more balanced. On a track like Exogenesis, the switch between the Aria Organics and the Peacocks actually left the Peacocks sounding a little bit boxy, a little bit plasticky in some ways. And I think that's because they do have a few peaks and troughs in their sound. They are a bit mid-range focused. And I think overall the Aria Organic from bottom to top is a bit more balanced from a tonal point of view. And so I think much like the Ananda Nano versus the Sennheiser HD 660S2, I think looking at the Aria Organic versus the Peacock, it's again a case of what you're after. If you want a rich, smooth mid-range that's not super detailed, but it's very enjoyable, it's, it's good detail, it's not bad by any stretch, but if you're looking for something that's more about just sitting back, relaxing and enjoying wonderful vocals, I do think the Peacock's a good headphone, but I couldn't sit here and tell you that it's as good overall as the Aria Organic. I think the organic has technical superiority. I think tonally, it's probably the more balanced headphone overall. And I think things like spatial cues, imaging focus, etc., the Aria Organic just steps ahead. It will bite occasionally, that being the Aria Organic. It does have that greater treble energy. And so it's not going to be as relaxing and easy a listen as the Peacocks. The Peacocks are a headphone that I can put on and listen to for hours on end from any source, any music, and enjoy it. Whereas the Aria Organic will occasionally bite you if the source quality is poor or the material is poor. But that said, they're also going to reward you on the other side for good source and good music. And I mean good music in terms of the recording quality, production quality, etc. And so I was almost ready to wrap up here, but I had a special request from some patrons who wanted me to compare the Aria Organic to the Auto Classics from ZMF. I hadn't originally planned to do this because they're very different types of headphones, but they're similar in price, so let's jump into it. I tried two different tracks once again here. One of them was Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto No. 4 in G minor, and the other was Foreigner's God by Hozier. As is always the case, the ZMF auteurs sounded great. They're very tonally balanced, very neutral, very honest sounding headphones. But one thing they don't do so well is produce a lot of space in the soundstage. They also deliver good clarity and technicalities, but I've never thought of them as exceptional. They're one of those headphones that I look to as more of a wonderful tool. 
And I mean that in a positive sense that they're a headphone that you can rely on for tonal accuracy. If you're editing, mixing, mastering, monitoring with them, they're brilliant because they're not going to skew things. They're also a headphone that because of that natural tonality, you can listen to for hours on end with no problems at all, and they're very comfortable as well. But I was hearing straight away that they're not a technical powerhouse. And you can no doubt guess where this is going, because that's where the Aria Organics absolutely excel. They are a technical powerhouse. All of a sudden, when I went across to the Aria Organic, it was like now I was sitting in the front row. And I don't mean in terms of the size and space in the soundstage, I mean in terms of the detail I was hearing. It was like I went from having to sit in the back and hearing what was coming across an audience, being a little bit muffled by the audience, the PA system, etc., that being with the Auto Classics, to now with the Aria Organics, it was like I was sitting right at the base of the stage and hearing the piano player play it live rather than going through all the PA stuff I just mentioned. I was hearing details and nuance that the Auto Classics couldn't deliver me. And that's a double-edged sword. The Auto Classics will allow you to get more lost in the music, whereas the Aria Organic is going to engage you in technicalities. You're going to be listening to details sometimes instead of listening to the overall music. And I'm not saying that either is better or worse, they're just different experiences, and I thoroughly enjoy both. The Aria Organics also produced a much larger sense of soundstage and more layering. Neither of these recordings had particularly big sound stages, so the difference wasn't massive. But I can definitely imagine having tried these across a number of tracks, that if you do get yourself a recording and a system with lots and lots of soundstage, the Aria Organic is going to run away with it a little bit when it comes to staging. Having said that, it's not all rosy for the Aria Organic. On the Hosier track that I mentioned, which is Foreign as God, the vocals from this are recorded in a way that they can get a bit harsh. And definitely, that became less enjoyable from the Aria Organic. As you've probably gathered as a bit of a theme through this review, these amazingly technical headphones, and this is true for both the Nano and the Organic, both of these being as technical as they are, having the treble emphasis that they do, they can come back to bite you on any poor recordings, or a poor quality source chain. And that's where, again, something like the Auto Classic could be a better choice. It's going to be much more forgiving. It's not going to hit the heights that the Aria Organic can on really, really good recordings and really, really good source chains. But at the same time, you're going to thoroughly enjoy it no matter what you listen to. And so I think both of them are tonally very good. I think both of them are headphones I could listen to pretty much anything on quite happily. This is true probably for the Anana Nano as well. They lend themselves to any genre, any kind of music, any situation. They're good for gaming as well. I've been playing some Baldur's Gate with them, and they've been great for that. And so I think both of the new auditions from Hyferman are absolutely fantastic. But do be aware that they are technically incredible at the expense of being a bit less forgiving. And so I do want to give you just one final comparison now. And that was because, again, we've got a new headphone with amazing technicalities in the form of the Aria Organic. And then we've got that up against potentially an older headphone now from Hyferman in the HE1000 SE. It's a lot more expensive than the Aria Organic, and so I started to wonder if maybe now the HE1000 SE was no longer worth buying. Is the Aria Organic absolutely the best you need to go for in the Hyperman range, or is it still worth spending significantly more money? Listening to Bernadette by Paul Simon, and starting with the Aria Organic, the first thing I noticed was that some of the percussion sounds within this track were a bit too prominent from the Aria Organic. That treble emphasis occasionally does bring them a little bit undone in that regard. Having said that, the vocal was wonderfully clean and detailed, with a good sense of body and presence to it, and the guitar work was also articulate and smooth and refined from the Aria Organic. Jumping over then to the HE1000 SE, and I do feel like it's got slightly better tonal qualities than the Aria Organic. It's not quite as emphasised in the top end, and that means that tonally everything just sounds a bit more right. A part of that are things like the percussion sounds are more balanced in the mix from the HE1000 SE, and it means you can kind of focus in more on listening to the whole musical experience rather than getting distracted by details here and there. Beyond that though, everything else is quite similar. I think the refinement is a little bit better again from the HE1000 SE. So much like going from the Nano to the Organic, your biggest shift was in refinement, the same is true when we go to the HE1000 SE. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. I don't know if I can sit here and say it's absolutely worth the money to spend on the HE1000 SE. It's very, very hard to justify for a lot of people spending twice as much, or actually more than twice as much, on the HE1000 SE when the Aria Organic is already so good. And a lot of that's because what I hear from the HE1000 SE is intangibles. It's a better headphone. I have no doubt the HE1000 SE is better. 
But the only things that I can really clearly highlight is that I think tonally it's a little bit better. I think it's slightly more balanced by having less treble emphasis. And it's a little bit more refined. It's a little bit easier and more relaxed to listen to. But is that worth spending 3000 odd US dollars when you can spend, I think it was 1300 US dollars on the Arias? That's a whole nother question. If you put the Organic and the HE1000SE in front of me, there is no doubt I would reach for the HE1000SE. It is the better headphone, without a doubt in my mind. But whether it's twice as good and therefore worth twice as much money or more, that's a whole nother question. And so to bring all this to a close, I think what we've got here in the Nano and the Organic are two exceptional headphones. I think Heifman have absolutely knocked it out of the park with these. I hope this is the last revision for a while. It's going to be hard to imagine them getting any better than this. And so if you're in the market for a technically resolving, technically incredible headphone at either the $600-ish price point or the $1200, $1300 price point, then one of these should be on your radar. If you can spend more money, as I said, the HE1000SE is still a bit better than the RE Organic, but that gap's closing fast. Do keep in mind that neither of these is what I would call a relaxing, easy listen. They're technically exceptional, they're tonally balanced, but they will bite you on poorer recordings, and it's worth keeping that in mind. Sometimes the pursuit of technicalities and technical excellence can come at the cost of enjoyment. So do consider what's important to you, what you're going to enjoy most, and also keep in mind you can tweak that with things like your source chain choice. Plugging these into a good tube amp, or a slightly warmer, richer solid state amp that's a bit smoother in the top end, that can really help to balance off these while still maintaining their technical capability. And so hopefully I've been able to paint a good picture for you today as to what these are doing well, where they may be strong, where they're not so strong, how they compare to other options on the market. And as always, if you have found the video useful and helpful, then please hit the like button and subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave you to the music. Happy headphone shopping. And I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.